Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Discussing uh, uh, reproduction in plants. So there were two major types that we have discussed so far: asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. And the asexual reproduction, you have seen the uh, tuber or sucker of bananas. So you have one parent, and from that, we grow other plants. So would you like to recap some of the concepts that we discussed about the uh, sexual reproduction? Some pertinent points, how it is different from sexual reproduction and what are the advantages and disadvantages of this type of reproduction, asexual reproduction? Anybody would like to uh, recap some of the major points? So I think the, the best example that we discussed was banana gardens. So yeah, another one was, what was the other example that we discussed in the chapter? Anybody would like to comment on that, please? Uh, you remember potato tubers? So how do we grow? What do we discuss about potatoes? So the potato tubers that are growing underground, you remember the, the roots, they are swelling, they are uh, storing starch and food, and that's why they are got sw swelling. The swollen part is tuber basically, and that tuber has got more buds. We also call it eyes of potatoes. So you can just grow that part and it will give you exactly the same copy of the plant. It will grow into a big plant having same genetic properties. So it's not going to be very different from, uh, from the parent, right? While in case of sexual repro uh, reproduction that we discussed in plant, there were sexual cells were involved. So would you like to name those uh, sexual cells that we have discussed in the plant uh, production of plants? Yes, yes, Ravita. Go ahead, yes. Uh, so your question was that uh, the cells, right? Can you please repeat your question? Yeah, my question is that what are the sexual cells that are involved in reproduction in plants? Uh, what do we call it generally? What do we call it those cells? What do we name it? You uh, for, Yes, uh, for the male, we have the pollen grain. And uh -huh. the, for the female, we have the ovule. Yes, very good. And together they are called either male or female. Together they are called? Uh, gametes. Yes, gametes. Very good. The gametes are either male cells or female cells, right? So male gametes are called pollen grains in plant and female gametes are called ovules in plants. Male gametes are called sperm and, and may, uh, called sperm cells, while in female we call it egg cells, right? So one of the major thing that was contributing in, uh, in the sexual reproduction is the pollination, process of pollination, in which part of the plant is participating uh, primarily on the, in reproduction? Which part of the plant? So what did we discuss? Uh, yes, Yusra? 
the enter, yeah. which is like uh, having the pollen sacs and by the process of meiosis, it's making the pollen grain. Yeah, so the part that is participating and and reproduction is flower, right? So these are uh, located in flowers. Yes, that you're right. We have pollen grains and we have stem and we have carpel. So you have discussed about the stigma. So we were basically discuss, we, we will inshallah recap some of the major concepts so that you don't forget before we move to question answers. Uh, but yes, uh, we discuss about cell pollination and cross pollination and, and, uh, and they are totally different. Even the flowers are different uh, depending on the pollination. And what are different modes of pollination that we discussed? Uh, means, uh, different means or ways where pollination can take place. So the most common one that you have seen, you have seen around, whenever you go in a garden, you might see a lot of insects are just flying, roaming around in the flowers, right? They're looking for what, what part. They're attracted by, I think, three different things that we have discussed in this chapter. So what are the three different things that will attract uh, insects and that will also help in pollination? Yes, Zainab, Bita? Color, smell of the flowers, colors of the flowers. Uh -huh, uh -huh, good. Yes. Third thing. Third thing for which lines leading to the nectar. Uh -huh. To the nectar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So who will tell us what is nectar? That is extremely important. Yes, uh, Yusra. Nectar is like a sugary liquid, which is made in the nectary. Nectary is very good, kind of a gland that is producing sugary uh, secretion. Uh, there's called nectar. And this nectar is the one that many bees and insects, they are coming to collect. And they are, as you mentioned, that these three factors are attracting uh, insects. Uh, the color of the pl flower and the smell and the nectaries, that are nectar, which is there. So is it the base? of the flowers, so when the uh, insects are moving, going down and, and collecting the nectar, they also pollen grains, they are powdery material, you remember that? So, so this, looking at this structure, this one, what does it say? What kind of a flower, is it good for cell poly, uh, uh, sorry, for, uh, did we discuss about the means? Okay, one mean is insect, okay, what is another mean of pollination? Two different ways. One is, yes, Zena? Wind. Yes, wind. Wind is another water. way. Uh, 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 sorry? Wind and water. Wind and water. Yes, water also is uh, one mean of pollination. That's very good. Yes, can be flown away. And also animals and insects and wind. Yeah. So what do you see about, what do you uh, think about this flower? Is it good for insects or wind? Yes. Uh, so those who have not participated out of these two participants, Aisha Beta? The wind. Uh, this is for wind. So what makes you say that? Because it's not really attractive. And also there, the anthers are coming out. Very good. This and is very, very important. Okay. What else? The pollen are, they have a large feathery stick, but like they can yes. fly. Mm -hmm. sort of like float true. to other yeah. places that's very true yes and look at the anthers yes uh, the pollens are even these are uh, stamen or hanging or dangling outside the flower and even the stigma large feathery stigma hanging here it can also catch easily pollen that are hanging in the uh, right in the yeah in the air so it can easily trap pollen grains and yeah it's not that attractive as well you could see here it doesn't have any guideline no colors you you might need you may not see colors and this is common in case of grass that are grown as a weed or uh, yeah this is very very specialized so now you can easily uh, differentiate if you're asked about differentiate between uh, different uh, ways of pollination and what should be the characteristic or qualities or how do they differ the look of the flowers or the shape of the plants and insect pollinated and wind pollinated. 
So you could see here the flowers are basically a large, uh, conspicuous petals, often with uh, guidelines. You remember they are conspicuous, very prominent, very colored, but they are small. They are not that big and they are not conspicuous. They are not that color or attractive, right? And they do not have sometimes petals at all. Petals may not be there. They are strongly sending, as you mentioned, this is another measure you must keep in mind. So you need to visualize these two uh, flowers in your mind. Uh, one, the colored one that I showed you before, uh, a rose flower, for example, you could also visualize that and then visualize this uh, picture here of this flower and differentiate uh, between the insect pollinated and wind pollinated, right? So now look at the other structure, often have nectaries at the base of the petals, right? And there are no nectaries at all. So that's why insects are not attracted, one of the reasons. So it's wind pollinated, you don't need nectaries were there. Anthers are inside the flower, you remember, anther were covered with which part of the flower? Petals, remember, sepals and petals, they are protecting the anthers. And if you remember, uh, we also discussed that uh, the anther wall uh, initially, initially they were uh, grown inside the green sepals. So when the anthers are fully grown, the birds are open. When the birds are open, they are ready for the insect now to come and they have sand and nectaries and all the stuff. So insect can be easily attracted. That is very important for you. Anthers are inside the flower. The anthers are dangling or hanging outside the flower. And a stigma inside the flower and stigma as you can see here is a little bit leathery or feathery. And it's a, just like a brush where it can easily trap most of the pollen grains. Uh, stigma here is sticky while it's smooth and light, uh, which can be blown in, in by the wind. So one of the things that you should keep in mind, this is quite large quantity of pollen grains are in very large quantities. Quite large may not be, I mean, if you ask, this one is producing more pollen grains, right? Why? Because many of them, if they are taken away by wind, the chances to get on, to fall on the stigma is low. That's why you need more pollen grains. Uh, compared to the one uh, pollinated by insects, the chance, although there are a lot of pollen grains, there are wasted, but not up too much because the flowers are lo uh, located around in the bees and insects, they are also uh, in close proximity. So that's one of the reasons that uh, they are really good for pollination. Okay, so keep these points in your mind. And I think you can fit all these concepts in the structure of this flower that you have 16.1. And uh, the, another one, which was uh, we have discussed before on page uh, 209, 200, right? And figure 16.4, okay? So these, uh, you can easily compare. Okay. So the next stage, when pollination is taken place, the next stage is fertilization. You remember, what is the definition of fertilization? What did we discuss about fertilization? Anybody would like to define in simple way? Uh, yes, Anna. It is the fusion of chemical nuclei. It's the fusion of? Gamete nuclei. Yes, very good. Gametes, male and female gametes, when they fuse together, so the process of fertilization takes place. Since we are uh, discussing now uh, the, the sexual part of reproduction in plants, so we first of all discuss the structure of the plants, how they are different. So always make a systematic flow, a logical flow. So then first of all, you need to understand what exactly is needed for sexual reproduction, right? So you focus on, uh, on flower. And now in flower, you have both male part and female part. So how the fusion is taking place, they cannot move, enter, our pollen grains cannot move by themselves, not like sperm cell that can move on themselves, but pollen grains need some medium. And some, that could be insects or water or wind or animals, you know, and that's why when these pollen grains are transferred to the stigma, so now the fertilization will be, process will start, although it's not fertilization, fertilization has not taken place yet, because now it's just only the transfer of pollens, which is the pollination. 
So fertilization is the fusion. So look, you can, it's very unique that how fusion of uh, pollen grains, how pollen grains can now reach to the ovary, the, to the ovary where there's ovules. So, you know, ovule has got nucleus. And I, as I mentioned before that ovule also, uh, I think if you look at the structure, see, uh, this is one, this is the ori and you could see ovules. It might be one, two or multiple ovules, right? So each one has got nucleus. Actually, this nucleus should be fused with the nucleus of pollen grains. These pollen grains you could see here when they are dropped on stigma or pistil. So they are stick here. So when they, they are stuck on this surface, which is sticky material, they are growing a tube, okay? So this tube is gradually growing to transfer the nucleus. And you could see in the ovules, uh, what is there? Uh, you could see a small opening we call a micropile. And then the covering, and this is called integuments or outer covering of the ovule. These are basically protective coverings. The, we call it integumentary or protective covering. And the nucleus is just inside. So the nucleus of the male gamete, which is pollen grain, is now gradually growing, passing the nuclei through this micro micropile. So, and that's what the fusion is. Now this is called fertilization. So what do you call this cell when uh, pollen grain, nuclei of the pollen grain is fused with a nucleus of the ovule? So that is called fertilization. Now, what do you call this cell? What is the name of this cell? Yes, yes, Zainab? Zygote. Okay, very good. This is called zygote. Is it diploid or haploid cell? Okay, who is going to answer? You want to answer something? Okay, is it diploid or haploid? Yes. It's diploid. Why? Because it has uh, the chromosomes and number added for the female and the male. Very good. Yeah, this is called diploid cell, right? Diploid is now complete cell. Uh, as we know that half of the genetic, 50% of the genetic part is coming from the male side and 50% is coming from the female side, right? So pollen grain is bringing 50% of the genetic material and 50% was already there in the nucleus. So now it's a fusion. So now this is called zygote. And this zygote, which will grow into which part of the plant now? This zygote will go into? Anyone would like to comment? Yes. So you remember, zygote is gradually growing now, okay? So fertilization is for reproduction, okay? Keep in mind the logic of signal. Fertilization, uh, sorry, uh, reproduction means to increase your copies, the generation, right, to offspring or increase. So plants having flowers, we are growing plants through which part? What do we need actually? What do we sow in the soil to grow more plants? Yes, Fatima? Yes, Fatima Vita. A seed. Very good. Yes, that's true. So now zygote is going to be seed now because uh, this is now complete. It has got complete information for the plant. It, it will be growing. Zygote is single cell now, but it will be grow definitely growing into a, a full seed. Okay, and the seed will get a special structure. Okay, so you remember now that we discussed flower, uh, the structure of the flower, and then we discuss about the parts of male and female parts. And then we mentioned how this uh, male grains, because the fusion is required uh, for fertilization. And we discussed the means. And finally, when they are transferred by any mean, they are transferred nuclei, zygote. Zygote is now basically called seed. This is going now growing into a seed. Okay, you can think about different parts. This is the style is still there. And uh, there are many poles. So remember that if you have more ovules, multiple, you need multiple pollen grain as well. So one pollen grain can only fuse with only one. It can transfer nuclear, nucleus from to only one ovule. So it can fertilize only one. If you need more, uh, some plants may have multiple seeds, right? So this means that the multiple pollen grains they have transferred the nuclei and fused with the, uh, the ovules, nuclei of the few, okay? So this is a female nucleus. You look at the, uh, don't forget to label them. And I would say that label this structure, draw this diagram and then leave it open and then now 
put the labels. Just mark the, the areas and then don't look at the book and mark and label them yourself. All these parts label yourself and then you would understand. And I, I'm sure you won't forget it. And that's why you need uh, a clear understanding. So- Okay, um, sir. Yeah, uh, so there is any question? So you were telling about uh, haploid and diploid. So diploid and haploid, I don't get it. What okay, you didn't get it, okay. So you remember when we are talking about the uh, sexual reproduction, and this uh, in sexual reproduction, there is involvement of two parents, right? Male and female. So in plants, we discuss the male and female part is in the in the flower itself because we're discussing reproduction in plants. So female a male gamete is pollen grain, and uh, the female part is ovary. Okay, so that is the ovules in the ovary. So what basically it happens that uh, in the sexual cell, always remember that compared to the other cells they have half number of the genetic material. They have a half chromosomes. Why they have half chromosome? Because they, they are not complete. So pollen grain has got 50% of the genetic material and we call it haploid. Haploid means half of the number of chromosomes. Like in human, we have 46. So pollen, uh, uh, sperm cell or egg cell will contain 23 only, not 46. Because sperm and egg when fused together, it, it will make a complete cell. Here in plants, it may be like total maybe 11 pairs or 23 pairs, let's suppose, for example. So this part is br bringing 11 and this is also 11. So when they fuse together, it's now 24, uh, 22 pairs. So this 20, 22 is complete cell. So that's called haploid. The one which is with the half genetic material, half chromosome is called haploid. And when it's a, a normal or regular number of the chromosome, we call it diploid cells, like your uh, pollen grain has half of the any other part of the cell of the plant. So it has half of the chromosome, not complete. So this zygote is now, when fusion of pollen grains with the uh, nuclei of the ovule will take place, it has become deployed a complete single cell, which is zygote. And this one single cell will grow into a seed, right? And in case of human, this one single cell, zygote will grow into a girl or boy, you know, and give birth to uh, girl or boy. So this single cell is multiplied again and again, and finally a whole organism, a very complicated system is uh, created. And in plant, this zygote is growing into seed. That's why we'll be discussing next in the logical sequence is the seed. So when seed is farmed, fertilization has taken place, do you think the petals are still needed? Sepals are needed? Or anthers are needed? What do you think? No. They are not needed. They will they will uh, fall off. Why? Because we don't need it. They were for the pollination. Fertilization has already taken place, right? So that's why it's only for a few days or a few weeks, and the flowers you will wither away. It will just move and fall off the plant. Yeah. What What is that? The wall of the ovary turns into a twist. Exactly. Okay. So we uh, will we'll discussing about that. Yeah. So uh, what Sundas is saying. What about the wall of the ovary? So the fruit part, the outer part, the, the fruit that you are eating is basically ovary, the production. You might still see, uh, you know, the stigma, uh, uh, the, the button part you could see in some fruits and even tomatoes, that is equally still there. So it's ovary basically, which is growing and uh, big, uh, multiplying and increasing in size. So that is called fruit formation. Inside the fruit, you have seeds, okay? So these seeds uh, also have very special kind, you know, seeds are of a different size and different colors and different shapes, depending on they have cotyledons one or two or mono or dye. We'll talk about that. But first thing first is that you don't need these flowers, the petals and the stigma and in the, in the stamen, for example, they have done their job, okay? So as you mentioned that inside the ori, the you'll start to grow now. So because that was zygote, zygote is now getting into more mature seed okay the ovule, the the ovule which is now inside and fertilized is growing is called seed okay the outer part the which was the covering of the ori we call it ovule become hard and dry so that is will become into testa testa is the outer hard covering of the seed you you might see beans i think uh, red beans or kidney beans or you might have seen the uh, the peanuts so uh, yes i have yes, sir. yeah so all I the have. covering yeah, so in the you you could just take it out and you can see in the beans, red beans, 
there is a very uh, hard covering. And sometimes when we cook it, you remember we put it in water, we soak it in water. So that cover is uh, then, then moves away, peel off after 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 a couple of hours you know that's not that's why and the seeds are dry it's very very important to dry they are dehydrated see one thing which is very important water is withdrawn from the seed and why if if the water is not withdrawn what will happen the seed will grow first of all the seed dry will grow point. yes okay and what else even if it doesn't grow, it doesn't have environment. You, you, can you store the, the, the seed with water? If you put your, the, the red beans in a pack, a dry pack, you got it from supermarket, you put it in a kitchen shelf, right? It goes there for, for months and months. But if you soak it and now put it in water in somewhere in a bag, what will happen to these beans? Fungus will grow on it, right? It will go bad. And of course, it will damage the seed. That's why dehydration, the seed must be dry to become dormant. Dormant meat cannot grow. Many of the enzyme reactions are stopped now. There is a mechanism, there is a source, of course, potential uh, that if you put this in water and you give a proper temperature, proper environment, definitely is going to grow. See, seed, seed will grow, right? But you want to make it dormant for the shipment, for transportation, for the storage, it may not be a season now, right? You want to keep it, you want to store it. So that's why this has to be dry. One thing, this is very important. And inside the seed is the embryo, which is consists of radical, which will grow into root. If you, uh, you might have seen it, if you, uh, you, if you break the seed, any seed, you might see a special uh, structure uh, that is called, basically one part is called radical, and, and I think I have, they have shown it here, like this is the structure. So a small swelling or the radical, this is basically is called plumule and this will give shoots, new shoots. If you, and what is this hilum or micropyle? You remember what was the function of this? Here's the micropyle, okay. And what is hilum? So now compare these two figure, from where this part is coming, what do you think? Which part you want to you want to answer some of this? This one, yeah. This is the attachment. We call it placenta also here. So this you could see, yeah. The ovules is attached to the ovary. Why? Because it needs, of course, nutrients, right? So it cannot survive without this attachment. But when seed, you remember, when you seed are grown up, you know this will detach. So this part is called hilum detached. This you still see. Uh, 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 you know this clear mark because it's now detached from the from the ovary. Uh, you don't need this connection anymore. And this still there, microfile is a very small hole which still uh, you mean remain there in the seed even if it is dry. So the water can get yeah. So the water because this part is you could see is waterproof as well. It's not going to let water inside moisture. Why? Because then it's going to be uh, uh, grow or it fungus can grow on it. So definitely the quality will be damaged. This is one part. So a uh, testa is the one that is covering. Hilum is the part that was attached with the ori. So there's a detached, this, we call it placenta also, but this is not clear uh, phys physiological placenta that we see in the fetus in human being. Okay, so in the mother, uh, but yes, for in a plant we call this uh, connection is needed and a microfile is a small hole, you remember, through which the pollen grain was transferring nucleus, right? So this still is needed. And you could see here, uh, if you remain, remove this part, expose it, you might see a uh, plumule. With, that is basically, this part both is called embryo. So when you so, uh, grow or plant this seed in a soil, so what will be the role of cordyledon? Yeah, what is the role? Okay, anybody? Oh, Z Zana? It stores food such as protein and starch, so it will help it grow. Very good. This is the storage of energy storage for the for the seed, right? The seed cannot grow without it. It's really needed. Uh, that's why if you put the seed even in a dark layer, even it doesn't know need any uh, sunlight, still it can grow because it has some uh, energy, initial energy for the shoot to come out. The roots to grow and the new shoot to come out of the soil, to break it. 
And I think this uh, cordylidin is very easy to recognize if you put, you know, red beans, soak it for a while, and then you just break it. You could you could see two parts, right? The creamy color part is called the uh, cordylidin, and they are energy energy storage, and they also absorb water. When water is there, now the enzyme is now active here. So the, those plant enzymes that are required for the plant growth initially, so it's going to grow. Yes, this is this is very very important. You should understand. So yes, one quick question. Okay. Uh, uh, my question is that uh, once the embryo starts using the uh, food for in the cotyledon, okay, uh, so then it's obviously going to produce some waste substances. So where are the waste products? Going? You know, at, at that time, this is a very good question. Uh, question is that uh, when this plant is little bit growing, okay the roots are growing, the cotyledon might be, uh, you know, producing some enzymatic process and that waste product will also be generated. So where will it go? So any, any, any comment on that? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, she's asking like, uh, if, if a seed is growing, the cotyledon is a source of energy, right? So enzyme will be active. Enzymes are working constantly so that will also generate some waste products. So how this waste product is released from the cotyledon then? Wouldn't be uh, toxic for the plant to grow, for the new plant to grow? Anybody would give a, a best judgment or best guess? Yes. So remember, so the part is this cotyledon is initially growing and as you can see here, the shoot will come out of the i will so show in the next slide as well i have a separate slide for that so the shoot will come out now in that process the shoot may not be needing more will try to synthesize by photosynthesis because this will be depleted and this part is in the soil so it's not going to damage the the plant but the roots are growing the roots are getting firm so all the energy yes whatever product is enzyme enzymatic reaction is releasing that part is released in the soil so it doesn't have, and, and that's why we are watering. If you don't water it, probably it will die because some of the toxin might be accumulating or uh, building up inside the seed. So watering is very, very, it don't provide enough water. So this plant is not going to grow. The seed is not going to grow. But finally, cordyladen will come out of the soil then, okay? And then it will also become green. It will turn green and then it will start photosynthesis. So this is how the whole, new plant will be generated. But how this plant do you think is different from the one which is uh, produced asexually? So now look at this. You are, you are growing plant from this seed. And, and asexually, you don't need seed. You are basically taking part of the same plant, one parent, one plant. So you just grow it. Like in the case of banana, rose, roses. We never plant roses seeds. What do we do basically we cut a branch and then just put it somewhere, plant it somewhere in the soil and just give water so it will just grow a new plant there. So how this is different now from asexual to the properties of plants and you know the quality and other stuff. Do you have any answer for any, any explanation how it is different? Those plants that are grown by, from seeds and those plants that are grown from asexually from, uh, yes, uh, Zainab, you have any explanation? Uh, in asexual, there is only one parent needed. Uh huh. And in sexual, there is two parent needed. Yeah, this is the definition. Yeah. So I'm talking about the practical application. Like, what 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 difference would you see the plant that you are growing from this seed, and the plant if it is grown without seed or just by asexual reproduction? Yes, you have. Uh, in asexual reproduction, the plant would be of the same type, like the offspring would be exactly uh, same as the uh, parent. Yes. Uh, but for sexual reproduction, there is higher chance of variation. Very good, exactly. So remember, this plant, this seed was produced by this plant, okay? Wherever this flower was, whatever. Now this seed has got diversity because it has got pollen grains from different plant different source it depends if it's self-pollinated or cross-pollinated but usually it's, uh, if it's cross-pollinated you get a good variety so the plant which is growing from this seed would be different genetically somehow from this plant why 
if any disease is affecting this plant, not necessarily that this plant will have the same disease. It may have resistance because it has get, got 50% genetic material from this parent and 50% from pollen grains. So it has got more diversity. This is one of the reasons they are going back to uh, produce banana with, with, with diversity because they are saying that probably uh, Cavendish banana is not going to grow further. They are very much affected by disease and they cannot do anything about that plant. Why? Because if they're using fungicidal uh, or insecticidal drugs, it's not good for the crop. You cannot kill it. So what they are doing, they're going back to the seeds, those bananas, wild bananas having seeds. So they want to grow bananas from seeds. So the whole crop will have diversity. They can grow and they can resist diseases very easily. This is one of the thing, okay? And now you can easily, I, I think, uh, understand that why this diversity is there in this seed. So uh, because of these uh, genetic diversity that we have. So I think, yeah, yeah, this is here. Okay, I think this picture here, you could see here the uh, radical is from which part of the seed? What was the name of the, uh, of the seed, which part? What do we call it from where these shoots are generated? Embryo. Uh, the embryo is the whole part. Embryo is both the uh, radical and one is radical, another is plumule. Yes. Plumule. Yes, correct. Plumule is for shoots, yeah, for new branches. Okay. And you could see here the lateral uh, roots are developed. They begin to grow from the radical. And you could see this cotyledon, which is providing energy. And also the testa will be, of course, removed. No need, need because fall off and roots are growing. And this cartilagen come about above the surface. You could see the testa is already off and the roots are growing and the shoot is growing. So this will also finally be part of the plant and uh, participating in photosynthesis, okay? So this is one thing which is uh, required. So this whole process is called the uh, seeds. Uh, formation and this is seed germination basically germination so what do you think what is needed for seed germination if you want to grow a seed you have seen it just use your own practice experience that you have seen uh, people are growing crops in different region you might have seen it so for germination next stage is germination okay so these seeds are either like in case of wheat, wheat, uh, wheat or corn seeds for example or any other seed that we want to grow, vegetables and many other fruits, uh, seeds, we store it and then we wait for the season and then we plant it, right? But in case of wild plants, uh, nobody is going to store it. It's just only dispersed. So the seed will germinate. That's why you would see in the periphery, many plants are growing of the same kind. And these plants are a little bit different. You might see, although they are same in the shape, but you know, their trunk size, and their shape of the leaves, the quality of the fruit, the taste of the fruit is totally different, right? So you may not see the same quality, the same uh, property because they are produced by seeds and seeds are giving more diversity. We don't know from which plant the pollen grains were received that has produced more little diverse seeds, little different seeds and different fruit then. Okay, so who is going to tell us germination of seed? This is germination of seed, okay? In this picture, this is called germination. Germination means growing a new shoot, new plant. This is called germination. The seed will split. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he specifically mentioned, uh, the man should look at his provision, at his food. That we have sent forth from the sky raining. And then we have split the earth. And then we have put there a grain to grow. Then gardens of grapes, garden of olives, and garden of uh, many kind of pasture and trees. So this, this is called germination. So that is called germination of seed. So what is needed for germination? I think things are already describing one. First of all, raining, water. You need water for the seed to grow. Yeah, okay, what else? So we need water, we need nutrients. Energy. Uh, energy, okay, very energy good. Energy and yeah. No, we don't need sunlight. Sunlight. Later, it may, it may be needed because if the shoot is coming out of the soil and you put it in a dark place, this cotyledon is giving energy for a while, 
but if you don't provide now any uh, uh, sunlight it's not going to grow further it may survive for a while for a few days maybe even in dark because it has not started photosynthesis the cotyledon is still providing more energy right so it starts photosynthesizing right after it comes up it comes out after a while yes little bit that's why you can see here the cotyledon okay, okay what else is needed what about temperature um, proper temperature is needed right that's why some crops are growing in winter other are growing in summer right and you might find some in 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 uh, area where there's extreme cold some fruits okay. or, or maybe desert like desert plants are also like dates for example uh, you won't see that dates are growing in canada right because this environment the date, even the whole year date will remain green yes but date can grow in las vegas right because Arizona, why? Because the, the, the diversity or the temperature. There's the best weather for date is Saudi Arabia. This is the equator, which is a hot, dry weather, desert environment that is needed for, that's why a proper temperature is also needed, okay? So let's uh, talk about this question or uh, before we go to seed germination, this part is germination. So what is the function of the flower? I think uh, quickly, if somebody could recap, uh, what is the function of flower in a few seconds? Those who have not participated, I want to make sure that everybody has understood it. If you don't understand, please ask question. Okay, I'll try my best to explain it in different ways. Uh, but please participate and, and don't consider what is written in the book. The, the book has already given you all the evidences, all the things that you see around. So what do you see flower? What does it do to the plant? You know why it is important for the pl pl plants to have flower? So anybody who has not participated, I would like to, they should come up at least with one point. Yes, uh, Aisha. So that some insects can uh, take the pollen to other plants and it can germinate and okay, can exactly. pollinate. So, exactly. Flower is needed for reproduction. This is a sexual reproduction part of the plant. So if flowers are not there, they're not going to reproduce sexually. Yes, very good. The flowers are needed. Okay, what else for the flowers? Anybody and any other points? Yes, Maruj? It, need, it needs more of its one kind, like it needs more of its own species. More own species and the kind and the flowers are of different kinds, yes. And that will produce different kind of seeds, different kind of fruits, yes. Yes, Siddha, what do you? Uh, does it pr uh, protect the uh, stamen and the female part? Yeah, the flower itself, uh, the petals, yeah. the pet You could say now specifically petals and sepals of the fl flower can protect stamen and also the carpel. Mm -hmm. So the, the gamete cells are also well protected by the flower, structure of flower, yes? The uh, colors of the flower and the smell of the flower also attracts bees which can pollinate. Yes, the pollination is done by bees and also by insects and because of the color, because of the uh, wind or because of other animals. Yeah, insects, yes, that's true, very good, excellent. Okay, in which part of a uh, flower are uh, made gametes? Yeah, in which part of the flower the gametes are made? Yes. Okay. Anthers. Anthers, very good. Anther is collected called stamen, right? Yeah. Stamen is called uh, filament and also anthers. And anther is called pollen sacs. Remember, these sacs are producing pollen grains. And pollen grains are containing male gametes. Very good. Okay. And what about the female? Because they're talking about gametes and the ovary. And the ovary. Okay. Yes, uh, anybody would specify a little more about ovary? What exactly in the ovary? Uh, somebody from the participant? The ovules. The ovules, correct. Yes, that's correct. So ovary has got ovules, right? And anthers has uh, pollen sex has got pollen grains. Okay, very good. Let's go to next. In which part so of the, the pollens one? themselves are the gametes? Very Correct. Nice. Gametes are called together, yes. In which part of the flower are female gametes made? Yeah, I already mentioned ovary. Okay, ovules. What is a pollination? I think, yeah. So those who have not participated, this is really very easy way. Very easy definition. What is pollination? I think many of you already explained it. I just want to make sure that you have understood it. Somebody has not participated, raise your hand. Explain it in whatever way you, you like. Okay. Yes. Who is going? Yes, Maruj. Is it the transportation of the pollen grains from uh, from the male flower from uh, to the female flower? 
Oh, very good. This is, yeah, this is a broader definition, okay? If you want to be scientifically precise, you want that the pollen grains from the male part enter, the right? From enter to the stigma. Okay, this is, but your definition is correct. You still get, yeah, you answered the question. Very good. Appreciate it. This is the way you should think about. And then you have to uh, look, I think I will show you some diagram to, so that you memorize, you remember. I, I, I would like to visualize things, you know, keep in mind the structure of the flower. When you go in garden, uh, make sure that in, I think in Abdullah garden and maybe in many other uh, garden here in Saudi Arabia, in, in Riyadh, you may find flowers. You go closer and then you look at that and you may find anthers right? very and the pollens are sticking around. They are just powdery part. Yeah, if you and, touch inside. Yeah, the powdery part. And then you also could see uh, the stigma. Yeah. And then think about this is how pollination, the, uh, the pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma of the, of the ori, right? So that is how it is called the pollination, okay? And then holistically, you should also remember that this pollen grains can also come from the same flower. It, it can transfer from the anther of the same flower or it might come from different flower, okay? So this is why we have either cell pollination or cross pollination. Okay, good. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, why do wind pollinated flowers usually produce more pollens the insect pollinated one. Uh, yes, Zana. Is it because the wind pollinated flowers they produce more pollen grains because most of them would not like uh, lend to an appropriate flower or they are damaged or destroyed or wasted. They will be destroyed. Yeah. Wind, the chances of, wind, of destruction is more. Yes, correct. There are chances that many of the pollen grains that are generated or produced might be damaged. That's why we need more. And the chances of interaction is less. Yes, Nabil? Yes, I had to answer. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. 16.18. 1A. After pollination, how does the male gamete uh, reach the ovule? Correct. So uh, there is a uh, down a tube that uh, is grown out of pollen grains and uh, it passes through the uh, into ovule through the style. Uh, okay, so the pollen grain is basically producing a tube. A tube is extending down to the ori and then it's extending or transferring nucleus to the micro microfile uh, into the or ovules. So there's a fusion. Yes, that's true. Okay, very good. What about 1619? What is micropile? Anybody would like to give a try? And if you don't remember, I can show you the picture. So you Sir, can... Can I? Uh, I think some, oh, what, what, Just one second, Nabil, if you can give chance to some... Uh, yes, Maruj, you would like to explain? I have shown the figure here, okay? It's a tiny hole uh, or a gap, which mm -hmm. is uh, which leads you to the ovary. Mm -hmm. This and is a tiny gap or hole in the ovule, and this function is? is so that nucleus could be transferred to the nucleus of ovule. Oh, yeah. You got it. So you can yes. see here. You can see the picture. Okay. Uh, so that's why when you look into the book, I mean, you, it might be little, little different words, but you could use the same thing. The concept is the same, that pollen grain is transferring nucleus through the micropile into the ovule. So this nucleus, this, the, the, the black dot you could see, is fused with the female uh, nucleus of, in the ovule. So that's called fusion, and that's called fertilization, and this cell is now called zygote, and this zygote will grow into seed, okay? So this is the whole information you need to remember. Okay, great. So let's see uh, what about other part, 16.20? Uh, who is going to read it and answer? Uh, three participants. Let me see who is new. I appreciate new participant as well. I want so, more. Uh, okay, I think Yusra has not. Yes, Yusra, go ahead. What happens to each of the following once a flower female gametes have been fertilized? A, petals. Uh, after they have been fertilized, they fall off. Okay. For the, uh, for the stamens, they, if they're fertilized, they will also fall off. 
Mm-hmm. And um, for the zygote, uh, starts to like uh, become the embryo. Starts sorry, develop into an embryo plant, mm-hmm. embryo plant. Yes, and for the ov- an embryo plant. Yes, okay. Uh, for ovio, I think it uh, develops into a seed. Yes, sir, exactly. The the part of zygote. Yes, is developing into seed. Okay, good. Then, okay, Nabil. There is two uh, two parts. The last two part, Nabil. Yes, sir. Uh, e integuments of the ovules so it develops into testa and the uh, tough covering of uh, it becomes a tough covering of a seed wonderful it's a covering of the seed very good the covering of the seed is called uh, testa yeah that's like in testa. most of okay good right okay so then, uh, the next F, one the, uh, it ovary uh-huh. so it is uh, uh, it develops uh, into an end process like fruit uh, that All right. All right. ends up uh, in containing seeds. Yeah, it contain yeah it contains seed and is growing into fruit. Yeah, the fruit that we are using is basically the uh, swelling or growing of the ore. Yes, very good. So let's talk about briefly what exactly is seed germination. I think you could see here that uh, is uh, uh, there is no water in the seed. What they are saying, right? So you need to, first of all, provide water. Without water, the metabolic reaction in the cartilage and part is already stopped, right? So you want to water, give them water to activate because that is dormant. So what is dormant stage? That stage in which the, uh, the enzymes are not working, inactive or dormant. They are not working in the cartilage. So they need specific environment, water and heat and all the stuff so that they, this can grow, okay? And the seed, seed will finally grow into uh, they need different, of course, condition for the germination, as we mentioned before. And you can also see uh, a, a, a one of the experiments they have conducted where they put the seed on dry cotton and wet cotton, and then the cotton with covered with oil. And one part of the tissue where they have put seeds in uh, moist uh, cotton, and then also no sunlight. And then one, they have boiled the seed and then put it there in the cotton. So these are different condition. If you boil it, you have damaged the seed. It's not going to grow, right? And if you don't provide water and you break the seed, even it will not grow, okay? It has to be intact. So it has to be proper, properly maintained, otherwise not going to grow. So when it's germinating, so what happened basically, you could see the water goes into cotyledon and through micropyle. Micropyle is that small hole, remember that where pollen grain is transferring nucleus to the nucleus of the ovules, right? So it's basically what is getting in through this micropile, which is a small hole. Uh, I'm sure you remember it. Let me uh, show it to you again here. So here, see, this is still here. And this hilum is also a part which was attached to the ovary. So it's detached now. So you don't need, that's why some of the uh, seeds, like for example, in case of garden peas, uh, if you take the pod and you open it, it will be detached all of a sudden, right? And, and there are many other that we grow in, in our back in our country. And I think this is in our common observation. So we should not be confused about that. Okay. Eventually it bursts. The testa will burst. It will fall off. As you remember, the cordyladen is growing. It has absorbed water. The radicals is gener- uh, producing roots. And I think radical for roots, you could say R for roots, radical. And plumule is for shoots, you could say, uh, uh, the, the plant itself. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, they are saying that once there's sufficient water, so make sure that you have sufficient water. MLS begin to break down the store starch into maltose, which is required as an energy initially. Maltose and amino acids are soluble, so they will dissolve in water and this diffuse to the embryo plant, which uses this as a food, okay? So initially that is why even if there is no sunlight, uh, still it can grow because it's using the store energy. But after a while, when the, the shoot is growing, it's becoming green, and this cordyladen is also turning into green, uh, turn in, into green color, uh, then it also need, needs, of course, sunlight and more water, okay? So there's a, a seed germination. So our journey started from exactly what exactly is reproduction, the copying or producing generation. Then we talked about different types of sexual reproduction, asexual and sexual reproduction. We most commonly mention potato tuber and banana gardens is an asexual reproduction. We take a part 
of the plant and grow it okay so it's almost the, the same it genetically same and then we discuss sexual reproduction in detail and sexual reproduction we mentioned flower has got central role that's why a flowering plant need more water as well you have to take care of it right because if the flower is damaged you will just maintain the tree but you you won't get any fruit from the plant so then we discuss about these uh, pollination transferring of gametes fusion of gametes and production of seed and finally when seed is produced and and the fruit that we have eaten we have seeds right we throw it the seed or store it and then a seed need to be germinated right? germination will be needing uh, uh, why? Because to grow new plants, date palm, you know, mango plants and uh, guava and, and tomato plants and red and green chilies and different colors, they, they are all generated from the seeds, okay? And for the seed, you need much water. So make sure that don't forget that water is needed because the seed was dormant. And the dormant, the creamy color, the cordyladen is basically also having more enzymes. And these enzymes are activated, especially amylase in plant is producing maltose. So that is required for the plant is energy, okay? So then we ended up our story here. Uh, now we are grossly discussing, and then we, uh, I think, close the chapter, comparison of sexual and asexual reproduction. What is best and what is not best? First of all, the main difference is that in asexual, one parent is involved, okay? Not only, not two. Uh, and the cell are dividing by mitosis. Only sex cells are dividing by meiosis. So this is one difference in sexual and asexual. And in sexual, we need two gametes, male and female gametes. While in asexual, uh, we don't need gametes, right? We exactly reproduce the plant from the part of the plant, okay? So they are called clones. Clones mean copies. So they are genetically identical, okay? Uh, they, they do not have much genetic variation. This is one thing which is important. But in sexual, exactly opposite. Two parents are involved, cell are divided by meiosis, so just exactly opposite. Much genetic variation. If you know one part, you can easily describe the other, exactly opposite, okay? And uh, you can see here all the cells are diploid here, and here are haploid in case of uh, gametes. Uh, Either whether it's useful or use this genetic variation is good or bad. They have given some logics, okay? So they are saying that it might be good or might be bad, depending. If you want, if you got a good crop, good garden, you know, good plants, so you will have all the same quality, same taste, same color, you know, and you won't see much variation. And for asexual, you don't need to wait for pollination. You don't need to, need to wait for seeds to grow, which is a very long process, right? It, it gives like not much uh, uh, productivity. Uh, in case of, you might have seen that plants, uh, like for example, in case of uh, garden, garden roses, you cut a branch and then you put it somewhere, plant it in the soil. After a couple of weeks, you would see that it's giving even roses. You could see roses full, same color, see? This is for the gardeners. You could see many of them are planted. And this, we do it a lot in our back in our country. And also in Western countries, we have seen that they are growing the same color. So this whole patch, you can see this whole band is reproduced by asexual reproduction. They just cut the part of this plant, roses, and they plant it. So grow, so white and different color, they are uniform color. But the bad point is that if they are affected by disease, all will be damaged because they're having the same properties. They cannot cope up with the disease. They cannot control because they don't have much genetic diversity, okay? This is one thing that they have mentioned that disadvantages would be. If it's going well, well, fine. Yeah, because this will be really a very fast process. But if it doesn't go well, then definitely things will be hard to control. Uh, I think in flowering plants, sexual reproduction uh, produces seeds. Uh, the dispersal is also another area, okay? So you could see here that in asexual reproduction, the plant are growing in the same environment, okay? They are not dispersing. In case of seed, the seed might be taken by animals or by winds or by water. So the dispersal is really good. It will disperse in wide area. While in case of banana, if you don't cut these uh, suckers, it will grow the same plant in the same area. Finally, they will compete for nutrient water and many, and fertility of the soil will be very low to give you good crop. They will be lethal, suicidal action against themselves. You know, They will kill their own generation in this way. So it's, this is a bad point. While in case of sexual reproduction, uh, the seeds are generated dispersal. 
in a wide area, you can throw it, people are taking it away and, they're, and they can collect it. And, and, and that's why flown away by rain and by even animals eating on plants so they can spread these uh, 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 seeds in wide areas. And that's why you, might, you may not see competition. And genetic diversity is very good because a plant can survive, okay? Uh, I think before we go to question, I just show you one uh, small cap. Just I will take a few minutes, then we are closing, inshallah. I'm sure we are late a little bit, but I want to show you that you could. I will stop this one and let me show you another uh, slide in a few minutes, and we will stop it, inshallah. Okay, this part, can you see the slide? One second. Can you see these slides? No, sir. You cannot see? No. Oh, oh, one second, one second. Oh my goodness, why, uh, one second. What about this? You can, uh, yes, uh, I didn't share. Okay, I will share. One second, please. Yes. Yeah, okay. You can see this now? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, so they are talking yes. about reproduction itself no no okay i will i will close this here i think this one is fine okay so they are giving a very good summary of reproduction asexual and sexual reproduction uh, without involvements of the gametes and asexual reproduction for example bacteria is a very good example uh, is generating its own uh, DNA replication, when a part of the cell is divided into half to half, this part is binary fission. This is called binary fission. So it will break off and a new cell will be generated, right? Uh, but what I was about to show you is something which is very, very important, but I don't know why it's coming. Huh? No, they're not showing the other part. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Okay, this is a potato tubers. So look at this. I, I think these are some points I would say that quickly uh, go through it. They are discussing advantages, disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Advantages, it is very quick, no seed. Only one parent is needed. You don't need much energy. No gametes are needed. All good characteristic of the gen generation will be passed on, but no dispersals. You know, potato tubers, you have to they cannot disperse. You have to pick it up and grow it, right, in some favorable environment, right? like a parent plant. So it does not disperse by its own. This is one thing. It stores large amount of food and rapid growth. What, what are the disadvantages? Very little variation. Adaptation. Adaptation means fight against diseases. They can survive. They can survive in, 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 in drastic environment. They can cope up with disease, fungal diseases. So they have genetic characteristic and offspring are totally different, right? So lack of dispersal competition. So this is bad, bad thing because if banana plants or potato tubers, you don't cut them off, you don't remove the tuber, it will grow unlimited. And finally, more plants will generate in the same area, will grow in the same area, and that will deplete all the energy and nutrients, okay? For the sexual one that we discussed, uh, look at this now. Variation is really good. It's exactly opposite of the other part. Uh, yeah, you have any question? Yusra and Nabil? Yes, sir, over here. Uh, by the process of meiosis, when the chromosome is like uh, di uh, divided, uh, like it, it gets from 46 to 23. So what happens to the other 23? Yeah, these are- Like one 23 is required for the zygote. So what happens to the other one? No, different sperm cells. They are generating into 23 cells, different cells, right? So each is getting 23 cells, 23 half. So they are dividing into like two different uh, sex cells. So one 23 sperm, the other is getting 23 cells, but it's not like the parent cells, okay? I think this, this part we will discuss in the sexual reproduction, they have gone much details there, okay? So we'll just uh, quickly go through some of that one because we are already short of time. So uh, let me show you the pollination. Yeah, this part is very important, you could see here cell pollination or cross pollination and you could see the pollen structures and then i think they have compared these uh, yeah this part uh, the growth of pollen tubes how they are making ori and the seeds formation and let me see if you have the comparison comparison of the uh, both sexual and sexual part seed germination i think uh, 
I just show you. And these are different. You, you remember when pollinated or even the speed, uh, the, the seed dispersal is a very special wings or kind of, a, you know, first that are produced and they are flown away very easily. They are very light and they can spread very easily. This is one thing which is very good about sexual reproduction, that they are not, the dispersal is very efficient. It will go long way, just like a parachute, parachute-like structure. So it will go long way. It's not going to compete for the energy. Uh, and I think, okay, the next uh, probably, uh, yeah, this is a cell pollination and cross pollination. And we have discussed, I think, uh, let me see if I can show you just quickly one few points. Okay, this is a sexual pollination. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, this part you could see here. So what is B? Just a chart on the, what is B? What is C? What is A? Who is going to answer the real close it, inshallah? Okay, B, yeah, uh, okay, one second. Uh, who is going to answer this? Uh, yes, Nabil? Yes, Nabil. Zainab? Uh, all three parts, sir. Uh, okay, uh, uh, B, what do you call it in, in terms of seed? Plumule. Yes, this is a plumule. Very good. What about C? Who is going to answer C? Oh, so may sorry, I? Sorry, I yes, yes. Oh. Macropile? C, no. Radical. Radical. Very good. Not radical, okay. This is radical. What about A? So Cotyledon. Cotyledon. Very good. It's a di or mono? It's Die. One, one cartilage is called monocartilage and dicartilage. Okay, depends. It doesn't show just only the front row. I'm not sure if it's, but it seems like it's a monocartilage. Dicartilage is the one that you see in red beans. So, inshallah, some of the things then, inshallah, we'll discuss in the next lecture on Thursday. Uh, if you have any question, otherwise, we'll just uh, close the session now. Uh, but it's still open for discussion, inshallah.